is Sean Fairchild from Bass Gear Magazine, and today we're going to be looking at the brand new GM800 guitar synthesizer from Boss. Let's check it out. Well, I'm no stranger to Boss and Roland's guitar synthesizers. I've previously reviewed the SY-1 for this magazine. Um, I've been an owner of the SY-300, and I definitely owned and used the GR-55 for quite a while, along with the GK-3B pickup. The SY-200 is one that I particularly liked, and in fact was all over Ding! that album, my last release. And today we're looking at the GM-800, which uh, is super cool and actually features an entirely new technology. I'm gonna get into that in just a second. The GM800 uses Roland's same Zencore technology that's in its flagship synthesizer, so it's got a lot of the same sounds built into it that you might find in some of the synths. It offers 100 stock scenes, and as I scroll through them here, you can kind of see some of the names, and 150 user presets, and the scenes are, scenes are really interesting. I'm just gonna leave it synth pledge. That sounds like a pledge allegiance to the synth of the United synth of Funkadelica. So scenes on the GM800 are really interesting and they work a lot like a, like a preset or a patch would on a floor effects processor. A scene can have up to four tones. There are over 1200 tones on this synthesizer. The hundred scenes that they give you from the factory just are scratching the surface of what you can possibly combine and create yourself, which is the way I always kind of like to, uh, to, to use these things. But the scenes have uh, up to four different tones and they can be wildly different tones that are all synthesized based on the same input that you're giving it. So there's over 90 effects that can be applied to each synth voice. You can't have 90 at a time, of course, but uh, you have 90 to choose from for e each tone in the scene, and then the scene has two more effect slots for just that scene. And then there's a global compressor and master EQ, so there's really a, a ton of tone shaping that you can do with this thing. Now obviously having so many options comes with its own degree of sophistication and complexity. So I always find that the PC editor uh, is, is necessary for this type of product, and Boss have actually included a really great PC editor called Tone Studio. And of course I'm saying PC meaning personal computer, not necessarily Windows versus Mac. Um, but the, the Tone Studio is really good. It has its own kind of graphic design language that you have to become familiar with, but after you do, everything is very sensible. You can actually control every parameter on the GM800 from the software, and I would highly recommend digging pretty deeply into that if, uh, if you want to end up with some sounds that you have in your head. If you're just interested in exploring, obviously you can scroll through the different presets, and then the Control-1 and Control-2 pedals uh, give you different options to bring in and out voices or tones, uh, to bring in and out effects, to do various things. You can do octave swells, volume swells, anything that you really might be able to imagine, you can control with the onboard Control-1 and Control-2. And of course, there are uh, external inputs for additional controls and expression pedals and all that good stuff. It's really a highly equipped system. Using Tone Studio, I was able to pretty easily uh, craft a 303 sound that I really liked. The 303 is, of course, the Roland TB303 bass line, uh, hugely uh, influential classic acid bass sounds, or the sound of, uh, of Acid House and early Daft Punk and a bunch of uses with Square Pusher and Aphex Twin and all that kind of stuff. Um, I mean, no, no mistake that I'm wearing this shirt today. It's a great sound, and I've worked out a pretty good convincing version of it that, uh, that you're about to hear right now.
another sound that I've just got to have from from a synth system is a is an electric piano sound, a Fender Rhodes sound, and uh, there's nothing like a like a great like gritty, dirty Fender Rhodes sound, and I was able to get a, a really great one through the GM 800. I've used this kind of sound on albums, uh, and again on that last album I put out. I've used it on all kinds of things. If you hear any sort of, any keys on something that I've worked on production-wise, chances are it is a bass synth or it's audio to MIDI and I'm triggering it with my bass. This is a wonderful road sound. Let's check it out. Being a complex computer-oriented guitar synthesizer, of course, a bunch of these parameters, scene recall, scene switching, all that stuff is MIDI configurable or MIDI triggerable. So you can use MIDI signals you know, from, from a, an external MIDI pedal, for instance, to, to switch through patches or hit certain patches at certain times in your songs or performances. And of course, the GM800 can control other MIDI equipment by sending MIDI signals out via 5-pin or USB. In fact, the USB out is great because the USB out allows you to record either the direct MIDI as, as meaning not through one of its voices or not through one of its scenes, but just the, the guitar or bass to MIDI signal that you're putting out, or it allows you to record the resultant tone, the sound that you're actually using through the, the Zencore engine. So I actually hooked this up to my computer and hooked up my magnetic pickups and the GK5B pickup at the same time to see how the, how the real-time guitar, how the real-time bass to MIDI in this case uh, worked versus magnetic pickup tone. So let's check that out. All right, guys, so I've got Ableton Live up. I have the GM800 plugged in through USB. We're doing USB uh, MIDI out. So MIDI from the GM800 into Ableton at the same time as my magnetic pickup. So hopefully you can see this. I've got the bass plugged in to the interface in one channel. So we're getting the magnetic pickup sound. I've got the GK5B for the GM800 plugged into that. That's going in via MIDI. Audio is going to be recorded on this track here, track 8, and MIDI in track 9. All right, let's get something going here so we can see what this will sound like. <laughs> throw in just some weird notes that I wasn't necessarily planning just to see what happens with the MIDI because I think that will be cool. So all right so we can see here my wave file is in yellow right there and we can see what looks like you know at first blush at least visually kind of uh, in, in somewhat accurate MIDI interpretation of what I was doing. So we're about to hear the MIDI as well. Um, I have in the MIDI track, I have a grand piano sample loaded up here in Ableton because it has a very fast attack. And what I wanna do is compare the attacks of these sounds. So let's hear what this sounds like so far. like that part. Um, all right, so you can tell there is there is some delay here. That's, of course, going to be expected because we're doing real-time audio to MIDI. Um, and I, you might notice I have the piano uh, pitched up in octave, so it makes it easier to distinguish between the two sounds. Now, I don't know if this is going to come through on the recording or not, but I'm going to pan the bass hard left and the piano hard right. And I have already done this a couple times, so I've looked into, if I zoom in on the waveform and the MIDI information here, I've looked into the disparity between where the waveform starts. Here you can see a, a transient right here and where the MIDI note starts. And I've measured that to be, um, actually here it looks like, 
a little bit more than 50 milliseconds. Um, I've seemed to have seen it as low as about what I measure to be about 27 milliseconds. Uh, but this appears to be on the timeline somewhere around 50. So let's just give it the benefit of the doubt and say that this is right at uh, 10.800. And then this would be uh, 10.86. What are we looking at? Uh, that's 70, I think, so 75. So that looks to be about a 75 millisecond difference. Obviously, a lot of latency if you're trying to do things real time that have you know a really peaky attack as opposed to pads or something like that. So let's do, let's delay the bass track by 75 milliseconds. So I'm sort of yeah, doing the opposite with the piano track. I'm moving it forward 75 milliseconds. You won't see anything visually uh, in the waveform that's different because this will be a, an audio change that happens. So now let's listen and see what that sounds like. <laughs> again without the click put it back to 75 so as a means to record um, it's actually pretty accurate it's it's tracking what I'm doing pretty well so let's do something I'm going to drop this to 85 BPM, and let's do something much more um, chordal, which is something that software audio to MIDI systems have more trouble with. So I'll play something chordal, and again, I will, uh, let's see, I'll take the delay off, um, I'll recenter these guys, and we're just going to hear the bass. So let's see here. Whoops, and I need the click. How about... But it looks like the MIDI information was was tracking again relatively correctly. Let's hear what it sounds like. And I'm just going to go ahead and plug in that 75 millisecond um, sort of pre-delay on the MIDI channel. And uh, I will pan this already. So bass will be hard left, MIDI will be hard right. I'm not sure if you'll actually hear that on the video or not. Here we go. Just the MIDI. Helps if you play much cleaner than I did. One more time. So it's a pretty reasonable approximation of what I played. I mean, it's it's relatively accurate. It's more accurate than some systems I've used in the past. Definitely more accurate than what I was getting with a GK3B um, and using something like the Roland GR55 synthesizer, which I'm not even sure had the capability to go uh, you know, MIDI out like this in the first place. So this is kind of something new as far as from what I've used from Boss and Roland. And it's a very cool option. So if you want to sort of like reamp or resynth what you're doing later, um, it's a good it's a good way to to make that happen. You can capture the MIDI information for what you're playing. Just for the heck of it, let's see what happens. Um, let's see what happens if I do something slappy. This is this usually throws everything for a loop. So I'm not even going to use the metronome, but let's see what happens here. All right, 
Ooh, I clipped the input there. So let's just see. Let's see what happens. Sorry, boss and Roland. I know you didn't sign up for this. Let's um, let's see how this sounds. <laughs> <laughs> Not bad. Let's hear just the uh, just the MIDI. <laughs> All right. So obviously, a little bit more trouble with really percussive techniques, but still kind of a fun little test. Okay, on to the rest of the review. The release of the GM800 also sees a brand new type of pickup technology, and this is a pretty big deal. It's actually a fundamental shift away from how the, GK, the GK2B and the GK3B pickups worked, which were analog. The GK5B that mates with the, the GM800 system is digital. It's this guy right here. Still comes with the divided pickup, which is actually separate individual pickups per string. They each feed a signal out to this guy, out to this processor. So this is now a digital system that's doing analog to digital conversion on board on the pickup, then sending that digital signal down the serial cable into the GM800. Uh, this is using an entirely new protocol. There's a protocol called A2B. It stands for uh, Automotive Audio Bus, which is, and you might think, why, why would I be using something with automotive in the name? What, is, what does this have to do with cars? It's actually very interesting if you want to read up on it. Um, long story short is it's a, it's a great new protocol with really low latency for audio transmission that was originally designed for the automotive industry, but has found all kinds of new uses. And this is the first time that I've seen it in a musical product. Now, no synth engine, whether it be a, a pedal, whether it use, you know, a, a, a special pickup or whether you're just plugging into something, even the software like uh, MIDI Guitar 2, no system that I've used is, is perfect. And one of the challenges that bass players always have is that we play really low notes. Our strings are low. It takes a certain amount of time for pitch to, to be discerned by either software or the hardware engine to be able to tell what notes you're playing. So latency can be an issue in real time depending on the voice that you're using, especially as you play down on your lower strings. The benefit is that unlike with some of the software systems I've used, since you're using a divided pickup on the bass, it does actually track on your B string. It does actually track on your E string. It'll track anything because it, it, has, it has a pickup dedicated to that string. It knows when you're playing that string. But as you get lower in pitch, it can take longer to generate a, a tone with a quick attack. So if you're playing something like a piano voice, uh, you're gonna notice more of a delay as you play lower in pitch. One way to get around this that, uh, that I've used a lot in the past, uh, kind of maybe seems obvious or maybe seems dumb, but you kind of have to think of your instrument more as a controller and less as the actual pitch creating instrument that you're used to playing. And in that way, and this is especially great if you use a five string with a high C or a six string bass, you can play up one octave, sometimes even up two octaves to get better performance out of the synth engine and then pitch that voice, pitch the resultant voice down one or two octaves to make the sound that you wanna hear. You may have some resistance to that idea, thinking like, well, you know, I'm a bass player. I don't want to be, I don't want to be playing some sort of like funky groove thing way high up on the neck. But when you get used to the idea of divorcing the, the sound that you're used to creating with your instrument uh, from the actual articulation of what you're doing on the instrument, then you start to kind of get accustomed to this idea of using the instrument more as a controller, uh, which is something, it's a mindset that's very useful anytime you're trying to do any kind of synthesis or audio to MIDI translation, anything like that. So I highly recommend investigating that option if you're having issues with latency. <laughs>
All right, you guys, thank you so much again for joining me. I'm Sean Fairchild for Bass Gear Magazine, and we've been talking about the GM800 guitar synthesizer from Boss. Uh, make sure that you like and subscribe, turn on the notifications so you know when we drop a new review. We've got a whole new focus, I mentioned this in the last, the last review I did, but we have a whole new focus on deep video content uh, that's really demonstrating products a lot more thoroughly and a, a lot more deeply than, than we have in the past. In the past we've done really in-depth writing and uh, Apparently people like to watch videos more than read a four-page technical essay on a product. I don't know, it's so weird, right? So make sure that you are subscribing, make sure you're getting those notifications. Join us next time. Thank you guys so much.